Okay, so I'm starting to get a little bit deep. I'm actually going to go ahead, I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to start again. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. We are, we're in here and we're gonna make a modification to something I just got in. On my, on my boat, man, one of my absolute favorite tools, something that I use all season long is that Hummingbird Mega 360. I've caught so many bass over the years uh, because of that. But something that when it comes in, you know, to mount it on my old tricks, it's, it's a little bit long, okay? I've run the 45 inch shaft, old Trex trolling motor, and this 360 comes with like a 33 inch shaft. That shaft fitting on that motor, it doesn't give you a lot of extra space top and bottom. If you raise your old tracks up a little bit, you leave that 360 set, you're gonna start hitting it with the foot pedal and you can damage that 360 transducer. If you have your 360 raised up, you lower your old tracks down, the head of it is gonna hit the top of that shaft so what I do when I get my 360 in is I actually take seven inches off of the shaft of that 360 unit. And that gives me a little bit of space to where I can have that 360 in the water. It's gonna get a good picture, it's gonna be deep enough, but I've got some space to work with that old Trex. If I get in big water, I can lower it down. I can stay in the water well. If I get in real shallow water, I can raise it up and I've still got plenty of clearance that way. There are you know extreme circumstances where I might have to lower that 360 if I'm always on big water. But I, with that shaft cut off seven inches, I've still got enough room there to play with to where I can get it as deep as what I need to do. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna unbox this thing and then we're gonna get it out. I'm gonna walk you through that process of actually cutting this shaft down. So when you open your box up, you're gonna have a little tray here that's got your cables, some of your brackets, some extra hardware and stuff. So just set that to the side. And then your 360's there. Um, and you've got just that little foam pad that kind of protects that in shipping. But right there you go. Um, and this, uh, this shaft is, is like 33 inches long is what it comes standard. And like I said already, I'm going to take seven inches off of that. That seven inches is going to come off of the top. And, uh, and a couple different things, they, they've done some, you know, some changes throughout the, the generations of these 360s. The early ones, pre-Mega, all you had to do was just pull these screws off down here. You could slide that out. The ends on the wires were small enough that those would go right into the shaft. You could pull one out at one time, slide the next one out. You could slide those right out, cut it off, boom, you were good to go. Super, super simple. On some of the early Megas, there was a quick disconnect down here in the bottom that you could take these screws out right here on the top of that with a star bit. You could take those screws out, pull that puck apart really gently, and then take those quick disconnects apart, and then you can pull the wires back out the top. This one is the newest one, and this is sealed up really, really well down here, so I'm actually gonna have to do this a little bit harder way than what I used to, um, and I'm gonna have to split this down seven inches and then cut it around and cut that off. So it's gonna be a little bit harder, and you have to be really careful doing this to make sure that you protect those wires, that you don't nick them or chafe them or, or anything, and, uh, and cause yourself some unnecessary interference. All right, so what we're gonna do here to start with, you've got that little rubber grommet on the top. We're gonna slide it up and then take it off of those wires. No tools needed for that part, just set it to the side. You will of course need it again a little later. I'm gonna scoot this box this way just to give myself a little bit more room. Okay, so now comes really the hardest part um, of this deal. What I've got and the way that I'll do this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a measuring tape here. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna mark this at seven inches. That's where I'm gonna put me a little scratch mark there with my knife. Okay, so that's what I've got. Right there, there's my seven inch mark. Okay, so that's how far I'm gonna take off of this shaft. I'm gonna end up cutting it off. But what I've got to kind of protect these wires, I've just got a file here. If you had a big flat screwdriver, um, a little thin piece of metal, anything that you can put inside the shaft to hold those wires over to one side to where you can then run the saw down on top of that without having to worry about nicking those wires. Whatever you've got handy to, uh, to do that with, this file happens to be what I'm going to use. And that file also happens to be about seven and a half inches long. So I can put enough of that down in here 
and put it on top of those wires to where the wires are coming out the bottom, the file is on the top. And I'm gonna start with it out here a little bit and then kinda as I work down through there, I will, uh, I'll slide that in there as, as I keep working. But a vice grip or a, a vice would make this really easy. I don't have one in my garage yet. You'd think I would, but I don't. Um, but I'm gonna lay that on there and I'm gonna take best I can with a sawzall. I've got a fine blade in here and I'm gonna run that right along the top of that file and split that down to that seven inch mark. Let me brace this. I'm gonna actually slide everything over this way some. I already see something going on here. So I'm actually gonna take a little piece of tape and I'm gonna run just a little small piece of tape around the wire and uh, or a zip tie and that file just to hold that in place so it doesn't run away from it. Here's a zip tie. I know I had that handy. That file's wanting to kind of run down in there to start with. Okay, let's go again. I'm gonna stop every once in a while and just kind of look at it, make sure that everything's, you know, I'm cutting at a good angle. Uh, you know, the, make sure the wires are still in place where they need to be. Okay, so I'm starting to get a little bit deep. I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna start again. Okay, so there's that part cut off. I'm gonna kind of just get a little bit higher bite on it and go again. Good to go ahead and, and cut those little chunks off. That way you've got a good view of what's, uh, you know, kind of where you're at and how far you you got to go. Okay, so there's that piece. So yeah, so we're moving along. We're looking good. So now we've got this far, I'm gonna go ahead and slide my file on down a little bit. Okay, so that's about at our seven inch mark. Okay, so right there we go. We've got it cut all the way down to that seven inch mark. Now we can take the file off and, uh, and just, just hold that around, hold those wires out to this other side and cut it the rest of the way off. So there's that, so now we can, you wanna be very careful on this part. You could put the file on the other side. It's definitely not a bad idea, but I'm just gonna go, go real easy, especially once I get over halfway through or so. Kind of roll that around a little bit. Try to cut that as a pretty even amount. When you get close, it's not a bad idea just to break it. Then you can file off the rest. Okay. So I'm gonna take my file that I was using as a guard. Now I'm actually gonna use it as a file. Don't rub against the wires, obviously. Let's kind of go around that and take any of the burrs off. That wasn't the perfect cut, but that little grommet, a little bit of Gorilla Tape, and uh, you'll never never know any different. And you, so you may ask, so I mentioned there a few times, I took seven inches off of this. Why seven inches? I don't know, but that ended up being the perfect amount. The first one I did, you know, I kind of measured it out. I, I slid up and down the trolling motor um, once it was already mounted. 
I was like, just how much do I need? How much this way? And seven inches was the number that I came up with. Um, as deep as I ever run this on that clamp, actually on the troller motor, I mean, the deepest I'll ever run it is about right there. That's with my troll motor completely down. And that's where I have just a little bit of clearance with that 360. So, I mean, that's right at the top of that bracket. And then, you know, obviously when I'm running it really shallow, I'm going to have it up, you know, it's going to be up in this range. So that was the, it would give me the perfect amount of range at seven inches, because anything you had extra sticking out up here really wasn't doing you any good anyway. Um, you know, maybe stabilizing a little bit, but basically it was just, you know, extra real estate that wasn't getting any use. So that seven inches gives you perfect, the perfect amount of travel with a 45 inch Ultrax. If you're running a longer shaft, you may not need to do this at all, or you may want to take off just a couple inches or something of it. So again, this is for 45 inch Ultrax. Is, uh, these are kind of the figures that I've come up with. So last up to do just to kind of finish it up and, and clean it up, I'll, I'll get a towel, wipe this off. I'll put the grommet back on. And then it's just the install like you normally would, you know, putting this on the bracket and then the bracket on the trolling motor and you're, you're good to go from there. But this is, a, this is something that I've done to every one of my 360s for the last several years. It's not terribly hard. Um, this is the hardest way that you have to do it, but, uh, but I've done it enough that hopefully even this looks fairly simple, easy enough to take on. Just protecting those wires, using something, a file works really, really well. Um, for me, but uh, but yeah, using something to protect those wires while you're splitting down through there and you'll be in good shape. So we're going to button it up. I'm going to clean it up, button it up. We'll be all set.